Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Estancia La Pacho for some more Farming Simulator 17 Platinum Edition. And we've pretty much finished dealing with the wheat. There's a little bit of straw left. I think maybe one last batch of straw to collect. You can see that our soybean has fully grown as well. The combine has now started on that. And you'll also see, just there by the other side of the tree, the tractor is now working on reseeding uh, field two, the field that we've just harvested, uh, planting down a sugar, ba uh, sorry, a soybean crop. There you can see being planted and fertilised at the same time, using the same seeder that we used on field one. No need to use our cultivating seeder. Oh, sorry, our ploughing seeder, as you know the field is now already ploughed. So we just have this last little bit of straw left to collect. And you can see we've actually got quite a nice bit of extra cash from having do that you know from doing this. We're up to what 16,000 now. That's a nice little extra amount of cash that we've raised just from this straw. So that's helped uh, tremendously. You know, it's certainly, you know, covering our wage costs for running all these different workers. And it's going to help, you know, recoup some of the money that we've spent on equipment recently as well. Just get this last little bit. I've swapped the tractors over so you can see we're using the little 105. I've put some wide wheels on this. So that I could use the, uh, the 150 for the seeding job. And the sky's got quite dark and grey, as you can see as well. Clouds have come out. It will get sunny again a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, I actually quite like this cloudy look. This is very different as well. Normally it just gets very grey and dull. And I like the, uh, the sort of dark bluish hue that we get to this sky like this. You do kind of get the feeling that you do need your lights on. The one thing I have noticed, as we got the last of the straw, let's take this to be dumped as well. One thing I have noticed as well is that uh, street lights tend to turn on when it gets cloudy like this as well. I mean, there are a couple of lights that are on by the animal dealership. You'll see those as we get back there. There's our combine plodding away. Won't take, uh, won't need to be emptied in quite so frequently. This time around, obviously, soy soybean is a much higher yield. I'm sorry, a much lower yield crop, a much higher value crop. So it'll take a lot longer to fill that combine up. Give us a little bit more time to kind of move around on the map before we have to get back there again, which is good. But yeah, as we get towards the dealership, you'll notice some of the lights around the facility are actually switched on because it's got a little bit darker. That's unusual. You don't generally tend to see that. So again, it's kind of a byproduct of this new lighting engine that we have on this map. Oh, this tractor needs to go faster. <laughs> 19 miles an hour is just... It's a little bit too slow, really. It was the same with Big Bud when Big Bud came out and obviously had a top speed of 19 miles an hour. It just takes you forever to get anywhere if you have to uh, to travel any kind of distance. I mean, moving around on Mustang Valley in a in a Big Bud, either the 450 or the 747, just took an eternity to get from one part of the field to another because 19 miles an hour is pretty slow. Well, it looks as though those lights have actually gone out again, but they were on earlier. So maybe the sky's brightened up a little bit. And when those clouds first roll in, rolled in, it did get quite dark. And these uh, these side lamps here, these were actually switched on. So there we go, $842 for the final dump of straw. Yeah, like I say, we've made quite a nice tidy little amount. I mean, look how dirty this thing has got now. I have to definitely give this a good clean. I 
and I've been looking uh, through some of the groups, just that some of the uh, the stuff that people have been posting about uh, this new map, and uh, someone there has posted a, a screenshot showing how much they got in terms of yield of sugarcane from field 14. Now, field 14 is the field that we have. You can see that is fully planted. Uh, and they got around 300,000 plus litres. <laughs> they got over 300,000 litres of sugarcane just off field 14. Now, I'm assuming that that was fully fertilised and ploughed. Our field is fully fertilised, but it isn't ploughed. So, I'm not entirely sure what our total yield is going to be. Let's just see, has it grown a, another stage yet? I don't think it has. Let's take a little detour. No, it's still where it was before. And you can see now we're getting the 80% uh, warning on our combine. Which way is that thing headed? It's going up the field. We need to wait for it to turn around before we can actually empty it. So that gives me time to get this over to the wash point just here. Going the wrong way. There we go, let's get back in the Massey. Look at those clouds. You do almost get the feeling that there's a storm about to roll in. I'd love to see some real variable weather, like a proper storm rolling in, with you know, maybe flashes of lightning and really heavy rain. It'd be great if you know the weather actually had an impact on the game as well. As it is, it just all it does is it stops you from threshing. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't have any kind of impact on your crop or the yield or you know the quality of the soil or anything like that. I'd like a future version of farming sim to actually need to uh, you know need some kind of soil irrigation in game where you have to hydrate your soil water your, you know, your fields that would be a nice you know addition to the game I think and maybe you know if you've got a rainstorm that would negate the need to do it it would give you kind of like a free uh, a free uh, sprinkling of water on your field instead of actually having to go out and apply it I mean there's there's so much scope with things that you could do with things like that and I really do think that going forward Giants does need to add features like that into the game it has stayed kind of a little bit stagnant you know from uh, in, in some parts from this you know from 15 to 17 and I think we're going to need to see some real changes moving forward some real additions in uh, in gameplay mechanics so uh, one can only hope that those will appear in 19, which should be out in about just under a year's time. We'll see. We'll see that's still a long way off yet. This game hasn't even, you know, uh, reached its, you know, its peak yet. There's still more stuff to come. We do know that uh, there's going to be at least one, well, at least two more DLCs. I'm assuming that they're going to be separate DLCs as opposed to just bundled, bundled into one. Uh, we have the Mod Contest DLCs due out in March of next year. Now those dates are the dates that were laid out as kind of you know deadlines for the modders. You know they have to be sort of ready for release by March, you know, or or by the end of February for a March release. Uh, and we've got the Grimmer Potato Pack from FSI Modding. And we also have the sort of uh, old school pack from Matt XJS as well. So there'll be a combination of equipment. You know, Matt's pack will have tractors and I think a combine and a couple of tools with it as well. And then obviously the FSI pack will be very focused on potato equipment. So uh, cedars, toppers, um, harvesting equipment and storage equipment for, for spuds so yeah looking forward to those DLCs when they come out next year 
Beyond that, I don't know if there's anything else that Giants have got in the works. I mean, I'm guessing there will probably be another one. Another, you know, official pack of some kind. Uh, and also, you know, there's the Horsch DLC that is currently sort of in uh, beta release at the moment. It's the stuff that's been given away at uh, Agritechnica. And also there is a, a, a code for PC players that's floating around out there for them to actually get, you know, uh, a download of that you know that's as I say still in beta access at the moment it's not a hundred percent ready they're looking at releasing that officially next year uh, I think as a free download so it'd be nice to see that make its way to console hopefully it will do it's still unknown about whether that will actually make its way over but essentially even if we don't get the map you know just the equipment would be nice you know, I'm sure you know Giants will be able to bring the equipment over, even if they can't bring the map over. And then there's also the Rostel Mash Combine with header that is currently being offered free to PC players by Giants. That hopefully will be making its way over to uh, to console as well. They're working on bringing that. It's kind of a you know a deal that they have with Rostel Mash at the moment. So. Yeah, hopefully that will get brought over the consoles as well. And then also, uh, at Agritechnica, uh, Giants are using their software, so Farming Simulator 17, inside uh, a replica cab of the new Massey Ideal Combine. There's a chance for people to kind of get hands-on with that combine and get a feel for how it would actually operate in the field if you'll pardon the pun so who knows maybe maybe the Massey ideal is on its way to farming simulator in the future as well because I figure they must I mean the view that they were showing was in cab on the screenshot so I, I seriously doubt that there's an external view as well so maybe it's just a reskinned version of an existing combine but but laid out with uh, an ideal cab design you know for the for the simulator section but it would be great to to get a massy ideal into the game as well to get a new big combine and i've been saying this over and over and over again that we need a new top end combine because at the moment it's still the same too it's the new holland you know, CR 1090 and it's the case 9320 you know when it comes to a big combine those are the two biggest in the game and obviously the, the larger of the two Rostel Mash isn't too far behind that and you know the larger of the two you know the large Massey and the large Fent aren't too far behind that but it's still you know those are the two biggest the case and the New Holland and event essentially whenever you're upgrading a farm it generally comes down to which one of those two do you want and most people will tend to either go case if they like the American stuff or if they're just going purely on numbers or they have a love for New Holland they'll get the New Holland because it has a, a, a 2,000 litre larger grain tank than the case so as you upgrade you just reach the same point where you're always choosing the same big harvester and it would just be so nice to have something else thrown into that mix, something else that sits right at the top there as well, alongside those two combines. The Massey Ideal would be great for that. Whether it happens or not, that's another question. Let's see how our seed is getting on. So, so far, we are about a third of the way through the field I think maybe let's just open up the mini map and have a look mm, yeah about a third of the way through maybe maybe just a quarter of the way through we are burning through the seed so we are going to have to top the seeder up now this gives me a chance to get rid of two of those big bags which are <laughs> the you know, you know not a good decision on my part to get the big bags I've already used one of them to top the cedar up. 
So I've got like a partial big bag floating around. And the worker just driving through that. But as soon as he's done on that field, he's going to immediately switch over and start seeding on this field as well. Get some more soybean into the ground. Actually, I better check. Is he definitely seeding soybean? Yes, he is. I had this horrible thought for a second then that I was planting something else, like more wheat. I'm, I'm, I'm done with wheat. We have, <laughs> we have a nice little stash of wheat. Uh, let's see, how much do we actually have? We've got 56... Wow, just 57,000 litres in storage right now. We don't need any more wheat. 57,000 litres. That's, that's quite a nice little, uh, little amount there. So it's time to really stock up on something that is going to make us some money. And soybean is definitely that crop. And yeah, we've got that little bit that we start with being on a medium farm plus we've got this field and then we've got both this field and that field again that'll give us you know a nice tidy sum of soybean to sell and if we can get a great demand on that that'll be a bonus because you know I do need to get some kind of sugarcane transport system because if we're going to be getting 300,000 over 300,000 litres just off field 14. That's way more than we're going to need <laughs> to plant these two fields with sugarcane. Way more. Probably only going to need... Let's see. Field 14 in terms of size of field 1 is a little bit smaller. We needed 19,000 or so litres to plant on that field. So let's say we're going to need 25,000 litres to plant field 1. That's a rough estimate. And then three times that amount for field uh, two. So another 75,000 litres. We're going to need maybe 100,000 litres to actually do our planting. Which means we're going to have 200,000 litres to sell. Uh, I, I seriously doubt that we've even got storage for 200,000 litres over there. I mean, I thought the, uh, the yard that we put together... If I just jump back over here, let's clean this off. I thought the storage facility that we built would be good enough for a while, and I'm seriously starting to doubt that. Like I said, I think we might have to extend the size of our storage facility and add an extra tier at the back. Now, if that's the case, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that, but it kind of worries me as to, <laughs> going forward, just how much sugarcane are we going to be able to actually store and where are we going to be able to store it I get the feeling that we are going to have to rely on those grain elevators if we decide to actually press on and with my with my with my plan of turning fields one and two into sugarcane fields and then sort of the rest of the fields up there as well can you imagine just how much sugarcane we're going to have to process and deal with it's going to take us an eternity to get anything done that I kind of already knew, but you know, if it's going to mean it's going to be pretty much impossible to store because it's just so vast an amount, that could be a major issue. Um, because we'll only be able to sell so much before we crash the market. Once that happens, you know, all of our crop is going to be effectively worthless. Well, not worthless, but you know, worth very, very little. It's already not exactly what you'd call uh, a high value crop it's pretty pretty low value already so to, if, yeah we just compound that even more that's going to cause us some real issues so i mean let's just open these up does it look like we can store 200,000 liters in here i don't think it does i think we're going to need to stick more on the back i really do so um, uh, let's pull up the help window and
I think if I can find the right point I mean that one's already extended all the way how do I extend it on this side that's the porch there we go I think we're going to have to set out to here and just double the length, which means I'm going to have to get the cultivator back. Sorry, the plough back and uh, plough the second half of this section. Because I don't want to have that grass kind of growing through at the bottom. I really do think we're, we're fast approaching that point. We'll see. We'll see how it looks uh, once we've actually got the first part of our crop. If I can get away with not doing that, I'd rather do that. Um, let's strip that bit of hall back. Let's put that bit of wall back in. There we go. But yeah, I'm I am a little concerned that we just don't have anywhere near enough storage. And that we are gonna have to extend into this area as well. Right. Back to our Massey. Wow, look at that. We've almost finished the field already. It's amazing how quickly you can kind of just churn through this field. I mean, it's not a massive field, but I mean, look how quickly we've got through it. You know, just over 20 minutes, about 20, uh, 23 minutes, something like that. And we've done almost the entire field already. Because I did start it just before you guys came in. So, yeah, it's maybe running for about 22, 23 minutes, just a little bit longer than the video but not by much. Uh, and how much has he got in this tank? See, we're not even ready to empty him yet. He might even finish this field off before we need to empty him. He'll certainly go down and come all the way back up again. And then it's a question of whether or not... Yeah, I think there might be one last pass after that, coming back up again. So let's start looking at um, other equipment. We've got how much cash left in our loan? Uh, 30,000. That's nothing. It really is nothing. Uh, how much was it going to cost us for that trailer? 82,000. Oh, that's an awful lot. It really is. But, you know, it's got a 66,500 litre capacity, and we're going to need that if we're going to be getting that kind of volume of sugarcane. We're going to need something big to tip into. Uh, I wonder. I think we might just have to go with this one to start with. Because we can at least pull that with a tractor. We can't afford a truck. But that's an extra 92,000. An extra 10,000 on top. You know, 92 grand. Um, we're going to have to sell some grain. So, we've got the price going up here at the harbour for our wheat. Obviously, we've got 824 at the train. That means we could sell the whole lot in one go. Maybe we should just do that and sell at the train. It's not a, a staggeringly good price, but it does give us the chance to actually sell something via the train, I think. So um, I'm going to empty this combine, finish this field off. Yeah, that's two more passes, look. Maybe even a third if we're really unlucky with placement. Um, it's going to come down, it's going to go up. Yeah, I think that's three passes, actually, looking at it. Um, we'll finish off this field. And then we'll start taking our wheat over to the nearest grain elevator. And then we'll bring the train in. We'll unload the grain onto the train. We'll load the grain onto the train, as I should say. And then take it up to the transport company. Uh, all the way up... Uh, where is it? Where's our bearings? Yeah, all the way up in that top corner over there. Uh, and then we shall sell. Just trying to see if I can actually see where it is. And it's just too far off in the distance. But you see it where those rocks are up there. I think that in the distance, that is where our transport company is. So, Right, 
that's that trailer full. I'll check the soybean price as well. I mean, if we if we're going to get you know uh, a couple of trailers worth. Well, we won't get a couple of trailers worth, but we've got some stuff in storage, so that combined with what we're going to get off this field will give us two trailers worth and probably a little bit of change as well. Then we can probably maybe even look at selling some soybean. We've got a, a semi-decent price at the bakery. So, yeah, I think we need to start looking at raising some cash however we can. Because we are very, very low on money. And we desperately need some some better options. The sugar cane is going to take, you know, give us a nice injection of cash, but I don't really want to have to haul that vast an amount of sugar cane with with you no know, no real capacity. I mean, these two tra trailers combine and give us a, a capacity of sixteen, seventeen thousand. Uh, that's a lot of trips to any kind of you know cell point or storage point with any being able to only carry sixteen seventeen thousand at a time it's just a question of do we jump on that green price that we have now or do we wait for something a little bit better? We are playing on hard. That is a pretty good price for hard. I think... No, I'm, I'm not playing on hard. I'm playing on medium. I was getting confused with something else, I think. Yeah, I think I was getting <coughs> getting confused with Deutz Farm for a second there. Uh, it's obviously the other series that I'm playing right now. Oh! And our worker has run out of seed. Or fertiliser. Or both. One of the two has emptied. So. Let's take this over to the silo. And then we'll deal with our seeding issue. And then we'll put the combine away. So we have got that second field that we need to get done as well. There we go. Right, so. Uh, where is the right tractor? There it is. Yeah, we're out of seed. We're running low on fertilizer as well, so let's deal with that. Get this guy kind of replenished. How much of the field did we get done? Mm, nearly half the field. What about half the field, I think, by the look of it? That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. I do like this cedar. It is a really nice little cedar. Not the biggest of uh, capacity tanks, but uh, decent enough. So let's deal with the, uh, the leftover little big, big bag, first of all. Filling with a sideways bag like this is a little bit weird <laughs> because the seed comes out the back, so at the bottom of it. So watch, it basically <laughs> it just it shoots out the side like that. It's kind of quite comical to watch it. Um, this pallet is almost you know is partly used up as well. So 
we'll uh, we'll use up the last bit of this pallet as well. Uh, Six hundred liters. You know what? No, we'll um, we'll use up the the other big bag that tipped over on its side that I can't seem to straighten back up again. <laughs> Every time I try and get myself in a position to get it righted, you know, using just the forks, it wobbles and then falls over again. It's yeah, I'd rather just get rid of this one. Just saw the, a little bit of seed shooting out. There we go. It's not exactly the. <laughs> it's not exactly the most realistic way to fill a seed, up, but it'll do the job. So um, now we need to just top up the fertilizer a little bit as well. So I'm just going to do that by backing up and uh, and refilling like that. I'm just hoping it's going to take... Oh, no, it's taking the bottom one. But at least it dropped straight down onto the ground for us once I uh, started taking from that one as well. There we go. Actually getting a little bit low on fuel on this tractor as well. Uh, we don't have... Or do we? I'm not entirely sure if we have a fuel point here on the farm. I don't think we do. There's no icon for one. So I think we may actually have to take a trip. So that could be something that we could uh, perhaps do, is get a little fuel trailer. Just so we can keep a supply of fuel on the farm. Don't have to keep driving off to the, uh, to the gas station. So I'm a little concerned about, you know, having a, another strip. And when I reposition this thing just there, you see it steps out an extra line. So I'm going to actually restart him from this end, just so I know that we're not going to end up with a long strip in the middle of our field that doesn't have any seed on it. So let's get turned around. So the next question is, how much is it going to cost me for a fuel trailer? Hopefully, not too much. Yeah, we've had that uh, liquid transport mod pack recently come out, which is a godsend for American Midwest. Um, because it allows me to double up my slurry storage, uh, you know, slurry transport capacity, which is brilliant because it needs it. Uh, let's see. There is a fuel dedicated fuel trailer in here. That was a couple. There's this one here, which is 60,000 litres. Way too big. Don't even have anything that could pull it anyway, so we're ignoring that. But I'm looking at this. I think that could be quite good for our farm. Although, having said that, I do think these would probably tie in with the region a little bit better. Now, we can't use them both at the same time, because normally I would stick that on the front and then tow that from behind. Obviously, none of our tractors have a front connector, so... That kind of rules that one out, but I do like the idea of that one. It's only a thousand litres, but I think that would be the right one to get. So let's buy that. So we've got a small source of fuel on our farm. Uh, I'm going to uh, disconnect the trailers, and we are going to go and pick that up from the store. Let's get cruise control ramped up. And then once we've collected it, we'll be able to uh, take it to the fuel station and bring it back and have a portable fuel source on our farm. There's no need, I think, for us to go super-sized. Although I do think going forward, as the farm gets a little bit bigger and the equipment gets a little bit thirstier, then we will probably get that uh, red Joskin trailer. But for now... 
Uh, this is absolutely perfect. And it, I think, you know, thematically, I think it works quite well on our farm as well. It's going to sit, it looks right for a, you know, kind of a, a small farm that we've got. You know, I think it fits the theme quite nicely. So which way is the gas station? Oh, there's actually a fuel stop here. We can actually refuel just here. That's quite helpful. We've got two fuel points really close to the farm, one in either direction. So where is the gas station? says it's here. We can't get around that side, so maybe it's around the back. Ooh, nice smooth asphalt surface around here. And you know what? I wish... I, I mean, I love the car. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love the car. But I wish we'd got this as our drivable vehicle. I mean, how cool would it have been to drive one of these? Honestly... Come on, Giants, give us one of these, please. You know, the model is here. Surely it can't be that hard to convert it into something that we can actually drive. That would be incredible. To drive one of those. Brand it as Lizard. You know, but give us one of those, please. Right. Where is this fuel point? I'm stood at the gas station, so I'm not seeing where the refill point is. But this is apparently the gas station. So, so where do where's the pumps? Where's the storage tank? I'm looking for the prompt and I'm not seeing it. I did turn off the interactive zone markers. Let's turn those back on again, see if anything pops up over here. But, yeah, there should apparently be a fuel point here. And I just don't see it. I'm not seeing a, a refuel option pop up. Unless we're supposed to siphon it out of the tank of this Jeep. <laughs> oh, I'm doing a little Austin Powers moment here with the mini steering. Uh, no, it's not that. So, is it inside the showroom? No. Where's the fuel pump? That's the cell point. Ah, that's frustrating. There's supposed to be a fuel point here, and I just don't know where it is. No, wait, it's... It's me. It's the trailer. The trailer's showing up. I keep standing on the trailer. So, if I move away, the fuel pump will move away. Ah, what an idiot. I was just about to sort of, you know, ask for help on finding out where this errant fuel source is and you watch, I'm going to drive away yeah, look, see, it's me I'm the fuel point, oh, what a muppet oh, at least we know at least we know now, so uh, let's get this refilled with some fuel let's uh, all harangue giants to get us one of those that we can drive <laughs> that would be so cool be able to buzz, you know, you know, bomb around a, you know, our maps in one of those little jeeps. It'd be so much better than, you know, than some of the stuff that we've got right now. It'd just be perfect. And I don't care the fact that it might not be big enough to actually put anything in. And let's face it, you know, the Mustang mod that we have is you can't get anything in that. You can get practically nothing in the 
transit mod that we have you know the pickup trucks themselves only allow you to carry um, you know a tiny little bit in the flatbeds and it's not like the new classic car is going to let you carry anything so uh, yeah give us the um, give us the Jeep make us make that drivable that would be awesome that really would if we could get one of those to, to bomb around in I'd love that I'd have it on every map well not every map but I'd have that on, on multiple mats, have one of those to just whiz around from place to place. So there we go. Oops. Let's refill our rear tank. It's actually pretty going up pretty quick. I didn't think it would take. You know, it would uh, be that quick. I thought it might take a bit longer. And let's head back to the farm. We're seeing so much use on this little stretch of road. <laughs> it's the only road we're going up and down on, really. Um, let's turn into the farm. Oh, no, that is not an entrance to the farm. That is just an entrance to a field. Well, this is our field, so let's just drive around the side of this. That's a lot of sugar cane. It's an awful lot of sugar cane. It'll take us a while to harvest that, that's for sure. Uh, and I think by our uh, workshop, that's the word I'm looking for, I think this is going to be the best place to store it. So I'm thinking just here behind it, in that little uh, clearing there. This is. I'm making this a lot harder than it needs to be. There we go. So we have our little portable fuel tank now. Excellent stuff. Um, right. Uh, we were going to sell that wheat, weren't we? Did I just see a thousand at the bakery? Oh, no, I was looking at canola. Um, yeah, let's. Let's hold on to the soybean for now. And then let's just load up a grain elevator. And then we'll sell our wheat via the train. I think, because we can sell it all in one price rather than trailer by trailer and the price going down, you know, uh, after every load or two. So let's get hooked up. Like the rear trailer is side tipping. Yep. There we go. So let's load up on wheat. figure out which is going to be the best grain elevator to go to. I think it's going to be the one out towards the animal dealership. Uh, let's have a look. You know, we've been that way a little bit. Let's go to grain elevator 2. I think that's actually where the train is as well. Uh, no, train is not there. Uh, where is the train? Trains at grain, well, trains at grain elevator 2 down the bottom. Uh, but yeah, there's no quick route that way, so um, yeah, we'll go to Grain Elevator 1 and we'll load up there. So this is going to take a few trips, so I will get this done and then I'll come back to you when we are ready to load the train up. Alright, this is the last of our wheat. Just under 6,000 litres. So it's a nice straightforward route to the grain elevator. We literally just drive along the edge of uh, a couple of fields and then cross the railway tracks. It is quite a rough crossing, actually. <laughs> There's no kind of ramp or anything. It's just literally driving over exposed rails. So it's a little bit bumpy. 
But we're just driving here along the bottom of field three, uh, and then we're going to loop along the bottom of field 29, which currently has a load of sunflowers on it. Uh, and then from there, it's literally just hop over the railway tracks, and we're there. Our cedar is almost finished, as you can see. Almost finished planting soybean on field two. So as soon as he's done that, we're going to move him over to field one, get him planting on that as well. Just we should get, you know, uh, almost completely grown by the time our sugar cane is ready to to harvest. And by that point, it'll be fully fertilised as well. So all we'll need to do is just let it continue to grow while we're harvesting away on our sugar cane. And then once the sugar cane is done, we'll have two more fields of soybean to harvest. That'll be a nice extra injection of cash for our farm. We can sell that and then see where we stand from there. Who knows, if the, if the soybean is ready before the sugar cane, I may even do that harvest first. This is what I mean, it's quite a rough little crossing. It's literally just drive over the rails. And I fitted these to side tip so that we can just literally tip into the uh, container like that. There we go. So we need the train. This is going to have to uh, make its trip all the way around the map, unfortunately, to get back to where we need to be. And then loop all the way back round again to get up to the cell point. But at 51 miles an hour... It's not going to be that long to get around there. We're just going to blast our way around. We do have that weird kind of fisheye effect with the lens in here. You can see how it kind of distorts the uh, the interior look. But it's kind of cool in here, I suppose. Just a little bit disorientating or disorienting when you kind of just go from front on to side on. So there's grain elevator number three. If I'd thought about it, now I'd realised I would have loaded on that one. I didn't even think about it. Lesson learned for next time. Uh, grain Elevator 3 is going to be probably the better way for us to uh, to load our stuff so that we've then just got a very short trip up to the transport company. But we'll leave the train at the transport company when we're done, so maybe Elevator 1 won't be such a bad thing. You see we're gaining some height here. As we start to climb up to the rocky hills, there's the transport company. That's where we're going to be selling our wheat. There's the sheep in the distance. And then back down the viaduct. Can't quite see the farm from here. It's a little bit too far off in the distance. And what's this coming up? Oh, this is the lumber mill. And there's our grain elevator in the distance. So let's start slowing down for that. Go. 
There's our grain container. Just back up a little bit more. Excellent. And let's start loading our wheat. halfway I'm surprised we don't get more transport cars actually on this considering especially how much sugar cane we're going to have to load I'm guessing that's going to go in the front trailer we've got like one trailer for, for grain, one trailer for logs oops trying to close the lid and I think it just closes automatically yeah it does look there we go we move away from the tip point automatically closes so I think that front container there is for sugar beets then we've got grain no, sorry for sugar cane then we've got grain then we've got sugar beets and then logs at the back so one uh, one car for each for each type of product Sweep our way around. I'm surprised this doesn't actually go through the harbour. Or closer to the harbour. Have some kind of rail link into the harbour. I think that just would have made a bit more sense. There's a... A siding. I don't think we're actually able to flip the switch. But I think at some point I might actually wander down there and just check out that siding and see if we are able to just pull onto there. I doubt we will be able to. Um, so is this another cell point? Or is this just a loading point? I'm guessing this is just a loading point for logs. It's not a cell point that I know of. No, it's not. It's just a loading point. Look, no cell point marked on the map. It's kind of cool, I suppose, that we have that uh, that loading point, so that you can actually transport, you know, have somewhere to crane load the logs onto the train before you then bring them all the way around to the lumber mill. Got another road crossing coming up, I think. Well, kind of. We've got the BGA. It's not really a proper road crossing. I think that's it. Yeah, we're, well, that's it with the road crossings. We're heading up the hill now. To the transport company. So hopefully we'll get a nice amount of cash. I mean, we're carrying, what, uh, 56,000 litres at around 850 dollars per thousand litres so I reckon we're probably looking at around about 45,000 somewhere around there as a quick guess that'll be useful let's hit the brakes start slowing down don't want to miss the tip point That wasn't far off. 46,997, so a fraction under 47,000. Uh, actually, we're going to leave the train up there, aren't we? Uh, no, I'll, I'll leave it at um, Transport 1, where we loaded it a second ago. Because we can then always just move it round to 2 or 3 if we need to. So there we go, that is the end of another episode. Uh, thanks for watching. When you come back, the other field will already have been planted and will be ready to attack our sugarcane. So, uh, yeah, as I say, thanks for watching. 
I am Jim Bob, and we'll be back with some more Estancia Lapacho and some sugarcane harvesting very soon. <laughs>